hit OK. And then um, I'll mute people if we need to, but we'll just start. So thank you guys for being on. No problem. You guys all know Amber Gearing and Frank Garatino. Granatino? I can't say your last name. Granatino. Good job. Right? Yeah. With an A. So Amber has been my friend and my CPA for years and years, like over a decade probably. That's One of the right. smartest people I know. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Glad to have you on here. So I'm gonna let you kind of lead. We talked about earlier, I think the topics that people have asked about, but she's gonna start with the uh, business stuff and then maybe work towards individuals and hopefully hit all the all the things that we want to hear. So um, I sent you, um, and I don't know if you guys have seen, there's a couple links going around with the small business loan. So Amber's going to explain, I think, a little bit about all the things we're seeing, right? Yeah. Um, there's actually a couple different choices for small business loans out there. Um, there's only one, though, that you can get um, a partial forgiveness of. And that is the SBA Paycheck Protection Loan Program. And small business and self-employed contractors and individuals are eligible to get this loan. And what this loan does is it uh, covers your cost of your payroll, payroll tax, rent, and utilities for an eight-week period. And, as long, and that is as long as you maintain your headcount, your employees. For instance, um, if you have 10 employees and you maintain all 10, 100% of that loan related to those things get forgiven for an eight week period. If you have, say you have 10 employees and you have eight during the applicable period, then 80% of the loan is forgiven. For those people who've actually already laid off their employees, as long as they rehire them on the origination date of the loan, they are still eligible for that forgiveness. Oh, great. So that's the big one going around today. And literally just five minutes ago, the SBA uh, actually finally released their application. And they're saying it'll, it, the funds will actually be available by Friday. So that'll be very interesting. Um, and this one you have to go through an SBA banker for. So the first person you want to contact is your banker. And, you know, if you don't currently work with a, a banker or a bank providing SBA loan services, we have plenty that we can refer you to. There's an, so how do you know who is an SBA banker? You know, I don't know. You just have to ask. Okay. Frank, do you have any comment on that? I would, I would suggest just uh, going to the bank that you do business with as a, they'll have the most of your information and have the best relationship with you. And I believe all of them will definitely have a SBA banker to be able to do, um, you know, the application process for this loan. But in reality, I think probably the bank that you're doing business with is the best one to go to first. And if they, they don't have it, then another bank obviously would be able to as well too. So better than just clicking on that link that I've been seeing going around in people's emails. Yeah, that's that's a different loan. That, okay. um, that is the disaster recovery loan. And that one is not eligible for forgiveness. However, you can, that, you can use the proceeds um, for any number of things. And the repayment period on that one is 30 years. Uh, and it has that low interest rate as well. But again, that one is not eligible for the forgiveness. Um, the SBA loan, I believe, Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, has a 10-year repayment period. Um, you can use it for things that are not, uh, you know, payroll, rent, utilities, but that portion of the loan would not be forgiven. And you have to keep very detailed records on that because when it is time to ask for that loan forgiveness, you need to be able to prove that you actually used it for those items. Just going back to the banks, um, a few that we work with a lot that do provide SBA lending services are Country Club, Academy, UMB. Those off the top of my head all provide SBA loan assistance. Cool. And those are those links all on your website that you were just telling me about, which we'll put the everybody. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to our website, which is ggkc cpa.com 
Garen Granatino, Kansas City Certified Public Accountant. And you hit the blog um, tab, you'll see all of our COVID-19 posts. And we've been posting since um, the, you know, since the last few weeks, we're putting every resource that we can out there to help our small businesses and our individual taxpayers. Cool. I love it. Okay. So what about all the unemployment stuff for realtors? Since there's more realtors on here, like I see Tracy Jervis, who's also travel and self-employed or whatever. What about, what about that? Do you know? Frank, do you want to take this one? Sure. So basically, uh, typically uh, self-employed individuals and you know, self-employed real estate agents as well as just any other activity aren't eligible for unemployment because the second criteria for being eligible for unemployment is you're actively seeking work. If you're actively seeking work in your own self-interest as far as self-employment, then you don't meet that criteria. So basically through um, the states and the federal government, they have gotten rid of that criteria and as well as too, the federal government has put a lot of money towards uh, self-employed individuals being eligible for unemployment. Right now, Kansas and Missouri is still waiting for guidance from the federal government on how, what, the, what the criteria is going to be and what the application process is going to be. So right now, we know that everyone is going to be eligible for unemployment, but we don't know exactly how the application process is or what restrictions are on income. Because at the end of the day, if you even if you're self-employed and you have a reduction of income, you're still generating income. And are they going to look at that and are they going to determine that you're not actually unemployed, I would say they probably would, but we don't know 100% right now. And each state does agree to the federal program and they might each look different. So um, the way it's written now is uh, you would get, or a, a person eligible for unemployment would get their state unemployment, whatever that's calculated at, plus the federal government is providing an additional $600 a week of unemployment. That we are still waiting for, for the states to legislate and listed real time. I got her. I got her. Keep going. <laughs> we'll we'll keep you updated real time as soon as you know, especially Kansas and Missouri come out with those. So that extra six hundred dollars, is that just for people who are laid off like today, tomorrow, and yesterday? Or if you were laid off um four weeks ago and you've been getting unemployment, does that just kick in? Does it, what does that look like? It's supposed to be anything COVID related. So if it's any kind of um, unemployment or reduced unemployment COVID related, then even if it was a week ago or two weeks ago, it's still supposed to count. So it has to be COVID related. So if you lost your job at Christmas, you're not gonna get the bonuses. That's going to be something that's probably hashed out down the road because basically I think there's going to be a lot of people that lost their job at Christmas that say it's COVID related now. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it would be very difficult to get a job in this environment. So if you were, had lost your job at Christmas, good luck with that. Um, yeah. But is well, there three different, different Oh, I'm sorry. There's three, actually three different unemployment um, assistance programs pandemic unemployment assistance, federal pandemic un unemployment compensation, and pandemic emergency unemployment compensation. All three say similar things, but they're available to different people. Um, so each person individually is going to have their own circumstance. And you, know, you should talk to your CPA or your attorney to help you navigate which program is for, for unemployment, for loans, for uh, you know any tax credits you're taking, those kinds of things, you should contact your professionals because they can help you navigate that and determine which are the best ones to utilize for your particular situation. Gotcha. Looks like Shanna has her hand raised. Shanna, can you hear us? Hey. Hmm. Maybe not. Okay. Well, we'll keep going, and she can. If you have a question, stick it in the chat box, and then uh, we'll make sure, because I can see hands raised, but it's not seeming to work, so. Okay, so we've hit unemployment. What about all the forbearance talk? What do you know about that? Frank, you wanna take this one? Sure, so I mean, basically, that is still kind of, we're, we're still trying to, I guess, digest that information as well, too. So at the end of the day, basically, they put in provisions where you can't be foreclosed on, you can't be um, defaulted on, 
uh, based on, you know, maybe not paying your loan obligations or something for a certain amount of period. Um, at the end of the day, though, I, we're not sure exactly how long probably that's what the repercussions are going to be on the back end because the bank's not going to stop charging interest. The bank's not going to stop, you know, they might say, okay, you don't have to pay for three months, but at the end of the day, they're just going to tack it on to the principal and everything, everything like that. So basically, from what I understand about it right now is that, um, you know, they, they're putting in protections in place for, you know, owners of property as well as, um, you know, owner, uh, as, as well as renters. But at the end of the day, someone's, you know, they're still going to have an obligation and I'm not sure how it's going to work out with the banks. Have you heard of that uh, with cars too? I, I saw some chatter with people, car leases. Do you, have you heard about that? I haven't got that deep into it. <laughs> Car leases are pretty low on the totem pole. Yeah. Uh, let's see, she's saying, um, can you ask them about unemployment with coming back to real estate full time? Um, okay, so basically this girl, she went back to real estate full time in January, hadn't had a sale yet. And now um, are they gonna be looking at past, past income to predict what to get? Also, for those of us that use self-employed, should we wait to apply or do we apply now? Hmm. So for self-employed income, the states, Kansas and Missouri, both currently don't have the application for self-employed individuals yet. They're still waiting for the guidance from the federal government for that. Um, so if we, if we are applying based on self-employment, we got to wait until they, we actually have the applicable applications and everything like that. Um, as far as in this situation, um, you know, I mean, this is kind of a specific situation that's hard to answer because basically we did make the decision to go out being self-employed and maybe not having quite a sale yet, but we did leave a job <laughs> to, right. to be self-employed. And so I would say that this one is very hard to answer. And maybe Amber, if you have any other thoughts, I don't know if I don't know, even know what yeah. uh, might be a good answer for this it's one. Right. It's, it's really difficult because so many of our realtor clients are S corporation and they do pay themselves a salary. And then, so therefore they would be eligible to claim unemployment essentially on themselves. Um, so, and then going back to that, it has to be attached to an employer, right? Unemployment. An S corporation is an employer, but, but going back to this, Right. If they're not incorporated, if they're, an, um, you're, I bet 80% of our industry is not incorporated. And that's what the new unemployment for self-employed individuals is. Right. It's for, it's for that 80%. Yeah. I mean, to, you know, technically, if you have an S corporation, you are not self-employed. The S corporation employs you. And we're still waiting for guidance on that loan, the um, SBA loan with the forgiveness attached. Um, we are still waiting on guidance. Will Canada, an S corporation with a sole shareholder, apply for that and then get their own wages forgiven for you know that eight week period? We don't know that answer yet. Um, those are questions that you know they're coming out with new information. It seems like every thirty minutes, and we're doing the best we can to keep up and navigate through this with our clients. But um, if, if you do have a corporation, if you are a small business, there's just no reason not to apply for, apply for that small business um, essay, 7A loan. Okay, 7A, is that what it's called? Cool. I have um, it right. So speaking of like going back, or we'll go taxes. Are the checks coming? What are those based on? Because we're hearing all kinds of stuff and obviously I've got two kids in college and I've heard if the kids are over 17, you don't get anything. Is that 17 today? Is that 17 in 2018 when I filed? Do you know? Well, it's gotta be, it's it's based on your, whatever your last tax return filed is, if it's 2019 or 2018. Um, and that is uh, $1,200 per single person, 24 for a married, and then you get $500 per kiddo. And that is phased out um you know if your adjusted gross income increases above that 150 if you're married filing joint that phases out eventually um frank do you want to explain the portion though where it's it's treated sure. like a tax credit so so basically at the end of the day what this is is this is an advanced tax credit for 2020 this isn't some sort of like credit for anything past and so what they're trying to do is get this money out as fast as possible. And so in order to get it out as fast as possible, they're looking to years 2019 and 2018, like Amber said, to see if people qualify for it. 
if you do qualify for it based on those years, yes, you'll get a check in the next three weeks is what they're saying. But if you don't qualify for those years, then you won't. At the end of the day, this all gets reconciled with your 2020 tax return. And so if in 2020 you do or don't qualify, you either have to pay it back if you got it, if you don't qualify, or you actually get the full credit if you do qualify and didn't get it. But most people are probably just gonna get it and then get the credit on 2020 and not have to pay back or get more later down the road. That's what they're trying to do. So realistically, they're accelerating a 2020 tax credit that is gonna be reconciled next year at this time for everybody. And a lot of people either are going to not see an impact or have to pay it back or even get more because they didn't qualify in prior years, but 2020 was a maybe a down year and didn't earn as much. So when you say then, phase out too, going back to what Amber said, it's phased out. So I think I read it was like 195 for a family. If you made 196, do you get zero or is there a, where? It's 198,000. 98. And, and, and that is adjusted gross income. Okay. And the answer is yes. If you're above that, it's 100% phased out. Um, we have gotten a few questions from clients uh, who have had babies in 2020. And they'll get that credit on their 2020 tax return if their AGI is under the limit uh, when that reconciliation that Frank was speaking of takes place. So what other changes are you seeing? Obviously, we don't have to file in two weeks. No, uh, and you don't have to pay your first quarter estimate for the Fed okay. until July. That said, they haven't done anything with the June estimate yet. And Kansas, uh, to our knowledge, has not yet followed suit on that first quarter estimate. Um, moving along though, another thing that's been really helpful to a lot of people are the new IRA withdrawal rules. If you're not familiar with that, you can take a distribu distribution from your IRA penalty free, uh, you know, so you don't have to pay the 10% on it. You can take a, up to $100,000 penalty free from your IRA. And you can either take three years to put that all back in your IRA, or you can take three years and spread out the income. So you can pay that tax on your IRA withdrawals over the three years. So you still owe the tax, but you don't have to pay the 10% penalty, which if you take out you know, $100,000 is not insignificant. Right. So who are you guys the ones that help with that kind of stuff? Is that a financial planner? I mean, do you guys focus on income distributions from IRAs and stuff too? So we typically work, we always say we work in a group with all your professionals. So it should always be your CPA, your financial planner, your insurance agent, your attorney, all, all working together. So you would contact your financial uh, advisor to take it out, but then you'd help ask us to help you with the tax planning regarding when to pay the tax on that withdrawal. Okay. What else are we missing? What else has happened that um, we haven't covered? Anything? There's, anybody have any questions for Amber and Frank? Is there anything earth shattering that you've heard of that we haven't covered? No? Everyone's on mute, I think. Frank, what do you think? Anything that we haven't covered? Trying to think. You know, I think I think we uh, talked about kind of the big uh, the big points of the new legislation, but the thing is, there's a it, it's there's a lot of things that are coming out. You know, I mean, granted they passed the law, but that's the law, and then the analysis and regulation comes out after the fact, and that's what the government agencies are scrambling to do. So, as we know things, we're trying to keep all our clients updated, and we're trying to make sure that we have a good understanding of everything, and we're just kind of still digesting and waiting for as much things uh, to come out as we can. Okay, looks like Susan's asking, when do we think we will be able to get back to work? Will it be the end of stay? I don't think I'm qualified to answer that one. I don't think I am either. <laughs> oh, I, have well, a I can answer it a little bit. Real estate in Kansas City is essential. So we can work. We can't do open houses. We can't do, you know, overlapping showings. Um, we're being asked not to solicit and cold call and do things that would generate business and, and instead push it back to, I think April 24th, but we're still essential. Are you guys essential? We are, we are essential. And even though the uh, deadline is extended, we're still working to get every tax return that came in the door before tomorrow uh, done by April 15th. So 
you know, people who need their refunds can get them or people who, oh, just have some time to plan. And also, even though we are an essential business, all of our people, except for one, are working remotely right now because thank goodness we were already set up to do that. Long yeah. Tracy has a question. Okay, I have a question. Um, I've had a lot of lost income that can very easily be tracked. Should I be tracking that to take into account for this um, year, for instance, I'll get paid a commission and if someone doesn't travel, I have to pay that back, which clearly there's been a lot of people not traveling. So um, is that something I should be keeping track of? Well, if you have already paid tax on the income that you received, meaning if they booked a trip and paid the commission in 2019 and then you have to pay it back in 2020, then yes, that's a okay. business loss. Okay. Does that help answer your question? Do you have anything to add um, to that? Um, so there's, I have that situation and then I also have um, just, you know, straight up that hasn't been paid commission, but um, you've, you know, that I don't think I could probably keep track of that, right? Unfortunately not. And, and the reason why is that you are a cash basis taxpayer. So even if invoice somebody but you don't get the money in the door you haven't paid tax on it so yeah you also can't take it as a loss Got so it. unfortunately not but there is the unemployment um component that you could potentially take advantage of okay yeah i think Thank terry you. has a question too i do quick question um i, I so i joined the meeting just a little bit late uh did you guys uh uh expound upon and talk to the uh about the 7a loan already that was we, mentioned we sure did but uh do you oh. have a specific question about it uh yeah just just everything so um i'll i know someone on the uh on the uh that's on the call i'll just i'll just get back with them and, and we'll talk about it thank you yeah and i'm going to be um, posting the video so you can go back and listen to it too but um 7a sounds like a good thing i hope um, who else has a question? Anybody? Anybody? Well, I really appreciate it. You guys, this has been helpful, I know. Um, so, Shanna's asking about signing up for your newsletter. How can we sign up for the newsletter? So, Amber, how do they sign up for your newsletter? Well, uh, if you go to the website and you click contact. But I have uh, the website down now. It's GGKCC. Oh. GGKC CPA, right? Right, dot com. And then you just put your name and your email in and then just put newsletter in the subject and send it and we'll add you to that. And most all, if not, most if not all of our newsletters are already posted to the site. If you just go navigate to the site and click blog, and then under the categories, if you put COVID-19, everything that we've published to date on this is on there. Then Terry, I think that was you asking about the loan. If you have any questions for Frank or I afterwards, don't hesitate to let us know. We'll get your phone number out there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. No problem. No problem. Cheers to uh, whatever day. It's like Monday through Thursday are all the same, right? <laughs> Day 7,025 of March. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Okay, Thanks for having us, Shannon. Stay safe. Appreciate it, Shannon. Okay.